I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. Just click on the link in the description below or go to my website, AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. Hi there, I'm Coach Margaret. And today, we're going to be talking about the do's and don'ts of communication. Yes. Well, communication is absolutely critical and fundamental in your relationships. Because if you don't have healthy communication, it's going to cause a major disconnect absolutely. with your partner. Right. If they feel disconnected from you, they're going to feel massive amounts of separation anxiety. Yes. They're not going to feel safe with you, and ultimately, the relationship is going to fall apart. Right. So it's vital. And why would you bother to be together if you're not going to communicate? So today, we're going to take a look at some of the do's and some of the don'ts of communication. And hopefully, this will help you improve your communication skills for when your ex comes back around again or you start to date new people. That's right. So it will be useful no matter what happens exactly. with your relationship. So let's start with the do's. Okay, let's start with the do's. If you're on the verge of having a fight, calm down. Okay? Mm -hmm. What happens if you don't calm down? What happens if you don't calm down is if you're really angry and you're not filtering what's coming out of your mouth, you could say something horribly destructive and angry uh, and rejecting to your partner which you really didn't mean to say. Mm -hmm. uh, if that happens to you a couple of times, I was just dealing with a couple yesterday, I'm sorry doesn't count anymore. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you have to really learn to calm down, take a breath. That's a good, that's a good one. Yeah. And there are some people who, you know, if you're doing CPR, you're supposed to say one Mississippi, two Mississippi, because it gives you the right number of seconds. Try that, try anything that works for you so that you get at least a couple of seconds between your feeling really upset and angry mm -hmm. and you're actually responding. We talked about responding versus reacting another day and you want that minute to think about how to respond rather than to react instantly and get yourself in trouble. Yeah, okay? so it, if you're feeling like you're escalating yep. and you just want to lash out yep. or um, yep. you know attack the person, take a deep breath maybe walk away yep. it's much do better you have to do to leave the situation even momentarily or for a few minutes yep. than to say something that you're going to really regret and i'm sure a lot of you guys watching the videos are instantly thinking about something you said that we've you all regret done it. we've all done it you know i said such and such and i didn't mean it and i shouldn't have said it but mm -hmm. you can spend years eating that um, and some of the material that I looked at for this what was major source is Dr. John Gottman, G-O-T-T-M-A-N, yep. and he and his wife are famous couples therapy people. Yeah, very and good. one of the reasons they're so famous is that their work is straightforward and easily understood. But they, they say here that if your heart is beating more than 90 beats per minute, that you really can't think logically anymore. I didn't, say, I didn't think of that. Wow. And normal beats a minute, I think, is um, 60 or something like that. Um, so, you know, if you're really worked up, then it's very easy to be less than logical, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and you don't want to say anything damaging to the other person. Yeah. Okay? Sure. And if somebody says something very damaging to you, a piece of advice I read the other day says, the other person, the person who's being hurt should simply say, ouch, which will usually get your partner to calm down a little. Yeah. Okay? So that's one of the do's. Stay calm, whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. Complain more often. Now, that's hard to believe. <laughs> People will come into my office and say, I shouldn't be complaining. And I'll say, well, then why did you come? That's what I'm here for, for you to <laughs> complain. Um, and what's easy to do is if a disagreement comes up, there's the old adage of sweeping it under the rug and nothing gets resolved. Yep. So if you're unhappy about something, you need to complain, you need to whine, you need to do all of those things. Mm -hmm. Because stuff under the rug eventually piles up, as you can imagine, mm -hmm. in your mind's eye. Now I'm sure people are thinking, wait a minute, 
My partner's not going to want to be around me if I'm complaining all the time. Then they're going to say I'm negative. That's right. But, you know, you're going to complain <clears throat> in a way that... All right, and that's when they start to say, say I statements. Not, you are so obnoxious, I have to complain all the time. Mm -hmm. But when you leave all the dishes in the sink and never think about washing them after you use, use, use them, that makes me feel very grumpy. So you're going to say, this makes me feel this way. You're not going to say, you and condemn the person, mm -hmm. all right? Sure. So will you do the dishes now? Uh, no. Well, see? Uh, and then people say, nobody hears me if I don't yell. Nobody <laughs> hears you if you do yell either. Um, but complain. In other words, if there's a real issue that has to be talked about, be specific. Um, you know, generalizations don't, don't get you anywhere. And always stay away from always and never. You never do the dishes. Mm -hmm. It's different from it makes me grumpy when you don't. Yeah. Is it different? Does it feel different? Very different. Yeah. When you say, you always do this. Oh, no, you'll never do well, that. Well, maybe you feel like they always do that, but mm -hmm. it's probably not accurate, and they're going to be able to say your ar argument is invalid if they can come up with one time where that simply wasn't true. Right. Right? Bringing up a complaint about a specific issue or behavior is actually one of the healthiest activities a couple can do. Mm -hmm. And don't sweep it back under the rug. Yeah. And it can be from big things to little things. It's that rug is so available um, and it's just never a good idea because then what happens? Then the anger builds up if you haven't given voice to it. And then someday, kind of out of the blue, you explode. Yeah. Um, leaving your partner to feel like you're totally unpredictable. I didn't know you felt that way. Yeah. Even <laughs> rattlesnakes give a warning. You know. That's true. Yeah. Um, when you fail to call, call me to let me know that you're going to be late, it makes me feel like you aren't considering my feelings or the fact that I worry about you. And I haven't said, you dirty bird, you do this to me every other week. Mm -hmm. You know, you've said, it makes me worry about you. Yeah. Um, so Much better way of yeah. saying it. But don't just drop, and it's so easy, and you even hear people say it, drop the subject if it's going to cause a problem. Not if it's something that needs to be resolved and will keep coming up like indigestion, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so all right, number three? So we're, go we're going to calm down. We're going to complain more. In a, an effective way. In a, in a good way, yeah. And don't get defensive. For example, you turned the TV up too loud. Well, you told me to turn it up loud for the news, and then when the next program came on, now you're complaining. Um, don't get defensive. I had to spend $100 because we had the unexpected bill for such and such. I'm sorry if I forgot to tell you. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, so you don't want to get defensive. If somebody says, you did this or you did that, you don't want to get defensive and say, well, I did it because, or, you know, you made me do it. It's or, hard not to get defensive. It's very hard not to. Let me see if I have an example here. Um, no, I can't think of one. Um, Margaret, when you come to videos and you don't have good examples, it makes me angry. Well, I've been here for, I don't know, 22 weeks in a row, and I've always had good examples, and just because I don't have one today, you don't need to be complaining. How are we doing? Well, you always forget <laughs> to have good examples in our videos, Margaret. Okay. Is that better? Yeah, or am, I, I'm, am I regressing? <laughs> no, that, that was pretty good. Um, in other words, we don't want to get defensive. Or I could say, I'm sorry, Craig, I'll make sure that next week I have more examples. That's wonderful. I have lots of them in my experience, but I need time to go back that far. Yeah. And you always like to give me trouble about my age. Does memory go back that far? Now, see, we're going to get into mm -hmm. trouble here in a minute. I need to calm down. That's a good question. Just How far back can the human brain remember of something? Well, I remember the 12th century, and I've had enough of this. <laughs> All right, you want to validate your partner, and how do you do that? You really, really listen to what they're saying. It's easy to say, I've heard you whine about this 400 times, and I'm really tired about yeah. it. No, that's not going to resolve anything. You have to really, really listen, try to put yourself in your partner's position, and at least understand why they're upset about it, even though you think it's trivial. Yeah. And, you know, and you have to respond to the emotions that are being expressed. Like... She wasn't just annoyed that he wasn't calling when he wasn't coming home. She was worrying about him. Yeah. Okay? So you have to respond to the emotion. I didn't mean to worry you. I'm sorry. Yeah. But you have to respond to the emotion and listen to the needs that the person is expressing. 
Maybe they need you to listen a little more. And never, never, never can you go wrong by listening. Okay? Never. And it's a rarer thing than you think. And if you think about some of the people you know, certainly some of my favorite people are the people who listen to me, to others, etc., etc. Listening is very important. And if you're tired or you're stressed or you're in a hurry, it's very easy not to. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So, let's review. Calm down, because if your heart's beating too hard, you can't think, apparently. Complain. It's something we don't do often enough. Um, and I spend a lot of time reminding people that that's why they've come to see me, yeah. and that it's a very valid thing, and that it, it takes off steam before it builds up and causes a massive crisis yeah. of Because if you don't tell your partner what's right. bothering you, they can't yeah. fix it. No, they can't possibly fix it. And then, like I say, you blow up. Speak non-defensively, which we all agree is very hard. Mm -hmm. um, and, I mean, you know, and you can never, ever get yourself in trouble by saying, oh, I'm sorry, I messed up. That's worth millions of points. It's a, it's a phrase you want to hold on to. Um, and then validate your partner. Even if you don't agree with a single syllable, validate what they said, that you heard it, and that you respect it. Okay? Here are some handy phrases. Now these are all the handy phrases we're, we're taught when we go to therapy school, so we're, we're sharing some secrets here. They're those nondescript little phrases designed to keep you talking. And then what happened? How did that make you feel? That's the one that therapists get Gets te get teased the most for. And how did that make you feel? Mm -hmm. But it's oftentimes a very valid question. Um, really? Are you kidding? That shows your interest. Yeah. What are you going to do now? Express this thing. How can I help? Oh, that's another one that will get you out of all kinds of problems. <laughs> how can I help? Uh-huh. It's a good one. And it's written right here. Um, uh-huh. What? Uh-huh. I'm listening. That's good. I get it. <laughs> um, that, that lets people know we're listening. And there are thousands of little, little phrases like that that are really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, but people can't, it's hard for people to stay mad at each other if they're listening to each other, if they're really listening to each other. Yeah. And you don't want to say, and this came up for me yesterday in a couple session too, I've heard the same story 500 times. Your partner is still coming to terms with that story and may need to say it another 500 times. And this was somebody talking about things that had happened in his family of origin. And his wife was kind of getting exhausted with it. But the more he talked about it, the more emotion he was able to put in it. So let him talk as many times as he has to. Okay, I think they thought I was nuts at first, but I'm used to that. <laughs> All right, so that's what we have to say about the do's, now the don'ts. Gottman refers to these four things as the four horse horsemen of the apocalypse, yep. meaning that um, the apocalypse being kind of the end of things, that if these, these things get embedded in your relationship, your relationship is in trouble. Yeah. Okay. Criticism. Attacking someone's personality or character with accusation and blame. For example, you never think of anybody else. Or how can you be so selfish? Yep. Those are pretty heavy-duty attacks, right? Yep. Um, and people can get a lot meaner in a heated oh, argument. Oh, yes, they can. Where they and, and if it's your partner, they know you really well. They know where the really sore spots are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, as parents do with children too. And so don't do these things to anybody. Criticism that really attacks somebody's personality. All mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Contempt. Intentional insulting, name calling, mocking, rolling the eyes or sneering. Like I was just saying, I've heard that story 10 times and it doesn't seem to resolve anything that I have to listen to this. All right. Margaret, you keep giving the same examples in every video. I know, <laughs> but I'm not going to get defensive because I learned the do's. Again, defensiveness comes up. Feeling injured by others in response to criticism and contempt and refusing to take responsibility for personal actions. 
Being defensive blocks a couple's ability to deal with issues. Even if one partner feels completely justified in his or her actions, becoming defensive will only add to the couple's problems, and that is true. And how many times do you see people get defensive? Mm -hmm. um, well, I spent that $100 because we needed it for this, that, or the other thing. Mm -hmm. um, already you're in defensive territory. So easy to become defensive. Yeah. It's a real struggle when you feel it. When somebody's attacking your ego or, yeah. you know, who you are. Or who you are, right. Yeah. It's tough. Tough, you know. I've done this, this, and this for you, and I've done this, this, and this in this relationship, and so forth and so on, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and think about a difficult meeting at work. The minute you get defensive, you're done. It's more to be, you know, sort of matter of fact, and here are the facts, and I'm not going to justify my position, okay? But if you get defensive, you tend to get mean all over again. Um, and then we move on to stole, stonewalling, which is even worse than being defensive. Mm -hmm. Withdrawing from the interactions and refusing to communicate at all. Yeah. Uh, the, car, the famous phrase these days is, I'm done. I'm done with this. I'm not talking to you anymore. I hear that a lot. Yes. I'm sure you do. <laughs> um, I'm done. I'm not talking to you anymore. Um, when couples refuse to communicate about the issues, then you're really in a relationship that's heading toward fragile. There shouldn't be anything you can't talk about. All right? Um, it is completely fair in a relationship to explain to your partner that you are overloaded emotionally and that you need to call a time out or yeah. take a break and calm down before you say something you don't mean to say. In other words, you don't absolutely have to respond on the spot. You can say, I've had a terrible day, I'm on edge anyway, and how about we don't talk about this right now until I've had my cup of tea and calmed down. Yeah. That's absolutely the grown-up thing to do. Yeah. Okay. And that's in many ways the old adage we talked about earlier, that's to respond instead of to react. You know, I can't respond to you right now. I, I can't, because I don't want to react quickly. I need to take a time out. And that, you can never go wrong with that one either. Yeah. You can never go wrong with that one. But stonewalling, and that's a good term for it. And when you watch a couple do that, or family members do that, it's sort of disheartening. Then they have no chance to solve anything. I'm not talking to you even about this. Are you talking to me? No. Let's see. Um, and you don't get that far um, ever doing that. Yeah. So we have five do's and four don'ts. Yep. Okay, so you're going to calm down, complain, don't be defensive, and validate what you're hearing. And you're not going to criticize by attacking someone's kind of essence or inner personality. Character. Yeah. You're not going to treat them with contempt. Oh, well, like it'll be a cold day in hell before that happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you're not going to get defensive, I did it because, because, and you're not going to stonewall by saying, I'm done. I'm done. All right? I'm so done, Margaret. I'm just so done. Um, some other rules are fair, of fair fighting are, you know, the, the go to the I statements and not you, um, and keep it within this decade, because <laughs> people have been known to bring up stuff that happened 30 years ago. And I, I used to work with a guy who always said he and his wife had a rule that they had made up together that they would keep it in this decade, which, of course, everybody thought was very funny, but it does make some sense, you know? Yeah. When I first knew you, you did blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, there's a, a lot of good info there. Yeah. And uh, that was a, a lot of good, helpful tips. Um, one of the other videos that you can review that I did is The Reason That Couples Argue. Yes. That's a really good video. Yes where I go in depth into mirroring, validating, and empathizing. Oh, that's good. Which is yeah. uh, one of... That's a more sophisticated version of what we're saying here. Yeah. Yes. And I don't think I was here when we did that one. Could mm -hmm. we do that one again? Yeah, I sure. Like that's a that good one. one. Again. Okay. Um, so... Uh, and it's not easy. No one is saying this is easy. It isn't. Especially if you've never done it before. And that's why they say you have to work out a relationship. You do. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of good info to think about. Um, thank you, Margaret, for that one. You're welcome. So, if you want to get my help personally, go to my website, AskCraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching. I do Skype coaching. And if you got to get with me right away, I do offer emergency Skype coaching. You can also get Skype coaching with Margaret now. Yes. 
Just click on Margaret on the website and sign up with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon. Hi, I'm Coach Margaret, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist with 35 years experience. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me to get professional help on your situation. Go to askcraig.net to sign up for a personal coaching with me.